Interesting fight this one, Andy. It is. It's very early on in the career of Chris Pilkington, but it could be considered somewhat of a crossroads fight. So he's um, coming off a draw, having won his pro debut. Um, he's changed gyms, formerly boxing out of the Fighting Chance stable in yep. Felling and Gateshead. Moved across to Job's gym north of the river in Newcastle. The right side of the river, of course. And depending on uh, <laughs> where you were born. <laughs> He does like to get involved, Chris. He does indeed. He's another one who has come from the white-collar scene into the professional ranks. And uh, Alec Bazza tonight is definitely an opponent who can keep him honest. If he's not on his game, it could be a tricky four rounds, this. Yeah, he's... Uh, Bazza's had 32 fights, 32 losses. Well, sorry, 34 fights, 32 losses. Again, he's always against prospects. He's always against guys who win winning cup winning records and he generally gets to hear at least the final bell and he can go at a decent pace as well he is he's, he's one of those he's got solid fundamentals and obviously a very tough man as well yeah well, he takes some stopping I remember uh, Darren Surti stopped him at the Summer Rumble a couple of years ago and Darren Surti stops everyone that's exactly he, he stops people that aren't meant to be stopped like Alec Bassa for example yeah but straight away, Chrissy looking to get on the front foot. He'll get in the, in the white shorts, buzzer in the in the black with white trim. Nice head movement there from Pilkington, but yeah. just out of range with the right hand. I can see this being a, like this for the rest of the fight as long as it lasts. As the cliche goes, you can put them in a phone box and yeah. <laughs> I think they'd get on with it. Watching Pilkin in the way he started, it's no surprise to say that his last fight, the one he, he did draw against uh, Michael Mooney, yeah. was an absolute war. Both men happy to stand and trade. Neither really took a backward step. Well, Michael Mooney's known for that as well on the road, isn't he? Wild. Bass Swinging a left from Bass on that, yeah. yeah. Bottom with the left hand yeah. there. Oh, nice ride from Pilkington. It's one of the things that they've been working on at uh, Jobs' gym since Pilkington did switch over is getting back to those basics. Just breaking things down, getting the balance right. Every time he comes forward, he's looking to lead with that jab, which is good. Yeah. Coming towards the end of the first round here, how have, you, how have you scored this one, Andy? I think Pilkington's done a little bit more. He's the one being pushing the action, but also landing the cleaner shots. As you said, uh, one example there, Baz was a little bit wild, didn't really get much of an offense of his own going. I think 10 9 Pilkington, they'll probably be looking to calm him down, get him back to those fundamentals. He did jab well on his way in, he did. A couple of occasions I did notice him dropping the hands a little bit, which maybe would allow Baza to, to counter and respond. Just old habits, isn't it? It is, and um, obviously you've got the corner there. Again, another very experienced corner from the northeast. They'll know exactly what they want him to do, and it will be up to us to see if we can spot any changes, any subtle changes that Puckington's going to uh, introduce in round two. 
Interesting though because obviously Baza, although he hasn't won yet, he's he's been on the road. He's got a lot of experience. He knows how to survive in there. But he does come with a bit of ambition as well. He comes in and he throws shots. So it all depends how... I think Pilk is going to have to pace himself a little bit here just to make sure that he stays on top. And he just sort of patiently moving in. But once he's in range, he does look to work at a very high tempo. He does. He lets the combinations go in fives and sixes, doesn't he? There you go again. Really looking to rip into the body with yeah, the Yeah, he's getting good leverage on those shots, though. He's, he's turning at the hip well. Passer's hands were glued to his head, which allowed Pilkin to work the body in the, against the ropes. Nice little token jabs there from uh, Pilkingen. Oh, right. Typical Baza though, comes back. I think Pilkington did block most of that, but it's enough to let him know that he's still in a fight. Yeah. One thing I do like about Pilkington is when he's on the inside and it looks like they're tied up, he's still looking to work, he's still yeah. looking to throw his hands. Again, looking at the landscape here, Baza's the one that's got the extra, the height and reach in this one, so Pilking has to get on the inside, he has to let them go, but you can't just punch like that for three minutes of every round. It's there was a little lull in the action and there was a bit of space between the two. Baza looked to control yeah. it, landed a couple of cleaner shots. Pilkington's best work does come in close, but that comes at a cost. Even in a four-round contest, fighting at that sort of speed yeah. and that pace, it will have it'll an effect on him, yeah, it'll yeah. catch up with him, exactly. Oh, it doesn't seem to be at the moment, though. Some good left hands from Pilkington there. And two or three got through in a row. Bassa takes a good shot, though. You've got to be a different type of character to, to do this for a living, haven't you, Andy? It's a different breed. I can see why people turn over wanting the glory and the, the, one eye on the title belt, but to turn over and become a professional boxer with little to no chance of ever having any success. But in a lot of the cases, if you, you know, if, if you're fighting in the opposition corner and you're fighting regularly, and you know how to look after yourself. You can earn a lot more money than the guys who are fighting three, four times a year on the on the on the home bills. I was surprised to discover that fairly recently. Uh, speaking to a couple of sort of people who work with journeymen and provide them yeah. for the local promoters, just how much they can make if they're fighting regularly, yeah. which is why you do see a lot of them trying to go the distance. They don't want the medical suspensions if they're stopped. Second round of Pilkington there? Yeah, he seemed more, set, more settled in it again. As I say, when the action slowed, Baza did pick, look to pick him off with a few shots, but the majority of the work, as scrappy as it was at times, the majority of the cleaner work was still coming from yeah. Pilkington. Fought at a good pace though, so... And again, straight to work from Pilkington. Yeah. In close. He's not overloading those shots, though. No, they're just... But Baza's loading up with those ones, certainly. There was only one in there. I think Pilkington looked to really swipe at him. So because Pilkington was taking the power off his shots, that's allowed, that's encouraged Baza to think, hang on, I can, I can walk through some of these shots here. I think a 
violent game of chess, isn't it, really? Because you, you, you have to manipulate your opponent, you've got to shift them around. You've, it's, it's not just uh, hit and don't get hit, is it? Not at all. I mean, that's why the best boxers in the world are the ones who are often one or two steps ahead of their opponent in the ring. Yep. And if they're not, they need to work out how to get into that position. Except I've never played chess and been punched in the face. <laughs> Not at the same time, anyway. <laughs> nice little pivot from Pilkin, didn't to get yeah, Alex Bazza in against well the there. ropes. Bazza still looks quite strong in there. He does, he's just forced his way out. There wasn't anything particularly subtle about that. No. Subtle as a break. Decent left hand there as well. Oh, a couple of good body shots. A little bit crude from Pilkenham, but very effective. Yeah, but... I think the round was... Just slipping away a little bit, and he's, he's just thought... Is Pilkenham starting to feel it a little bit in there? Is he feeling the pace? Has Baza felt what Pilkenham was offering? As you say, not putting everything into the shots and thinking he can almost walk him down a little bit. But if he does that, he needs to keep his hands up because Pilkin just got through with a nice right. Another little uppercut there. We did see a little bit of this in the second round, but then Pilkin tended to start to take over again. But he is looking a little bit... I mean, they're both going to be Felix. It has been fought at a pace here. If the fight's changed, Pilkin was on the back foot a little bit there, but he produced some of his cleanest work. Yep. He did quite well boxing on the back foot, getting out of trouble. And again, nice little yeah. nice jab, nice little turn. Yeah, and there's nothing really on the shots because he's moving, so he's, he's not there to take any, any shots back and return. This is it, there. he's landing scoring shots and, and staying out of trouble. Hope that was just uh, coming together there. No shot in. How did you score that one then? I think Pilkinson edged that for me. Uh, Baza had his moments, but I think, as I say, Pilkinson showed me another side to himself. Eh? He boxed quite well on the back foot, moving, happy to. Not snapping out the shots, but landing clean shots and, and doing enough to, to win the round for me. He's actually shown good movement as well when he's actually doing that. There was a 20-30 second spell the, earlier on the round there where it was looking like Baza was, he, he might be coming on stronger in the later half down to William Warburton. There were a couple of instances where they were in close and it looked like Baza was the, the stronger of yep. the two, just walking him back towards the ropes. But Pilkin had adapted well and, and finished the round in control. So let's see how much both men have got left in the final round here, then. Immense respect between yeah. the two. <laughs> and then straight back to punching each other in the face. Oh. Oh. Lovely trade in there. Oh. He's, he's, he's rock buzzer there. Hooking and wobbled him with a right hook. Both men landing solid, solid shots at the start of this round. Both men probably feeling that the other's a little tired and they can get something out of this. Yep. And it was Pilkin and they came off better out of that last exchange. Baza knows how to survive these, these moments, but uh, after that initial burst, the snap seems to have just, just gone out of um, both men's shots. In a but at the same point, so will the punch resistance. It's just keeping that. It, it's when you get tired, and this is one of the things that they'll do when they're working in the gym. Is it's keeping your shape when you start to tire and fatigue. From a technical point of view, the, the more tired they are, the, the more the hands are going to drop. Yeah. And if they do get caught, it may be by a shot that they could have taken around earlier. Yeah, absolutely. But after putting in a shift, it could be enough to to score the knockdown or to cause more damage. Well, it looked towards the start of the round that uh, Baza might be 
coming with a big finish there, but then with that, with that big hook there, uh, oh. Pilkington's just there. Uh, this is where Pilkington finished the, the previous round. He's just tapping, yeah, the jab, tapping the jab out, moving well. A couple of them are knocking Baz's head back slightly. Right hand, a little bit low there. Don't know how much it connected. Even as the, the shorter of the two, Pilkenden's working the jab well. Yeah. Staying out of trouble for the most part. But well, he's just staying off that punching line, isn't he? Well, considering uh, Jobs' gym were really wanting to go back to the basics, working on the basics with him, I, th I think they're, uh, I think they're going to be happy with the way he's performed in this one. It was almost like he got the first round out of his system when yeah. they really put it on him. And from that point, he has boxed very, very well. I think he's actually had the call on those basics. Bass are just looking for a bit of a breather there, but there wasn't any break called and poking him right on top of him. <laughs> I mean, the jab is one of the most basic punches in boxing, but there's a reason that it's the, the first one taught, and it, it's often heralded as the most important. Without question. Just technically accurate. It was enough to deter Baza to keep him off his attack. Yep. And then that allowed him to work a body on occasion and move around the ring. Baza walking around the ring with his hands in the air there. Not sure he actually thinks he's won that. Poking around on the other hand. How do you score that one then, Andy? I think Pilkenden's won it. There were a couple of moments in there. I wouldn't be surprised with another 40 36. I think, especially when he did box and move. I think without ever causing serious damage, he did win a few of those rounds very widely, yep. just by boxing well and moving, avoiding getting into that tear up. <laughs>